Hello everyone uh, and welcome to our webinar. Uh, we're really glad to have you guys here and to talk about um, the awesome topic of digital transformation for furniture manufacturing. Um, just to get started here, uh, just tell you a brief introduction about who we are. Um, we are in Piger Technologies. Um, we do custom IT services. Um, we develop mobile apps, web applications, and use the latest technologies, some of which we'll talk here, uh, AI, chatbots, RPA, automation, um, to be a true innovative partner um, with our clients. We have, uh, as you can see, been um, in business for 15 years. We've developed over 500 applications, both mobile and web. We are expanding into different um, technologies, like I had mentioned, RPA, AI, blockchain, Alexa. And we've also uh, have been awarded the Inc. 5000 for the third year in a row. So enough about us. Uh, we're going to move on forward to our, um, to our webinar. Uh, also, if you have any questions, feel free to write uh, any questions you have in the Q&A. We will have a Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. All right, uh, that's enough from me. Our, uh, our panelist for today is Ritwick Bose. He will be taking it from here. Ritwick? Thank you, Mary. So um, welcome, everyone, again. Uh, this is our uh, webinar session uh, related to digital transformation for furniture manufacturers and retailers uh, in terms of how new technologies like AI, RPA, and augmented reality is helping them, uh, not just from a consumer um, uh, influence standpoint, but at the same time, improving their overall production lines and everything. So we will cover different kind of use cases uh, in today's session. Now, why did we choose this particular topic uh, today? Um, and, and based on, if you, if you have been through our website, I would definitely recommend to visit empiretech.com. We have series of webinars that we host. Uh, in different topics uh, in terms of some of the latest technologies that we uh, cover. Uh, in the recent uh, past, we have uh, been uh, working with a lot of uh, furniture manufacturers and retailers. And what we have seen is that traditionally, when we look at this particular sector that relies most on handcrafted and manufacturing processes, the furniture industry has been always slow in terms of embracing new technologies. In the recent times, there is a lot happening in terms of bringing in a lot of these technologies, not just in the, in the digital space, but also in the industry 4.0 space. So what we have uh, certain examples of a sector that is well positioned to achieve uh, you know, definite ROI in terms of embracing these technologies. And the good news is for business leaders and CIOs from every industry, the current ROI for uh, you know, technologies like mobile applications, augmented reality, um, you know, artificial intelligence or robotic process automation, it kind of like is becoming possible. Um, we, are, we, we, we do see that uh, customized goods uh, were in the norm in the pre-industrial uh, you know, society in, in back in the 20th and, and the early 21st century. And, and there was a lot of uh, demand or the increasing demand for customization uh, was becoming a challenge for manufacturing companies, specifically in the furniture uh, industry. Uh, but that does not uh, end uh, in terms of uh, not adopting new technologies, and we'll see how we can cover those. So before we kind of like get into uh, you know these uh, slides that we will be covering, we'll we'll cover some groundwork in terms of what are the terms that you would be hearing today in this webinar. So digital transformation is probably one of the uh, uh, most common term, a buzzword, whatever you might call it. 
um, you know, that, that, that's, you, that, that's something that you're going to be hearing a lot today. Uh, but in our perspective, digital transformation is nothing but the process of just rethinking one's business model or the business processes that you have in the industry in light of the availability and affordability of digital technology and how we can connect all of these, whether it is people, resources, technologies, data that is out there, and bring out uh, information uh, for the benefit of the next term that you would uh, hear a lot is uh, uh, the industry 4.0. And what that uh, basically covers is uh, the, 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 the way it's kind of like look at, uh, we, we look at it as is how industry 4.0 factories that are basically able to manufacture one of a kind product without being unprofitable as they will produce items quickly, inexpensively, and in top quality by using different kind of tools. Then we look at digital manufacturing. Now digital manufacturing, there is a, there is a little difference between the transformation and manufacturing, uh, but what it all uh, entails is the integration of disparate systems, processes, and machines. Uh, integration enables real-time decision-making is, is what we believe. And, and based on this real-time data, it's not just about automating processes, but using that real-time data, using intelligence uh, you know, uh, around that data to improve your overall uh, manufacturing process or even the production uh, designs. The next one that we will hear is artificial intelligence. Now, what artificial intelligence is all about is it has nothing to do with you know the fairy tale of an AI suddenly achieving consciousness. That's not what we we are talking about. But here we are referring AI that that specifically is where intelligence is defined as the ability to acquire and apply knowledge. Now that can be from the machines that you are using within your factory space, within your manufacturing unit. At the same time, the systems that are being used by people within your organization. We will also touch upon RPA in terms of application of technology, which is directed by business logic and structured inputs aimed at automating business processes. How we can connect all of these, which are in, in, in essence is a mundane process in your organization. And finally, we'll also look at augmented reality because today the, the mobile devices, these tablet devices, the VR glasses, everything is, uh, is bringing a lot of visual elements uh, to, a, to an organization. Uh, and specifically for manufacturing, it is definitely a direct or indirect way of visualizing any kind of object, whether you want to see a production line going through one phase to another or a, or a furniture which basically is being built from one stage to another stage. That's kind of like what we are looking at. And at the same time, how we can extend this reality to our customers at the end of the day. So a quick summary of all the terms. We've covered digital transformation, industry 4.0, manufacturing, artificial intelligence, RP, and augmented reality. That's all we would be covering today with certain use cases in terms of how digital uh, these uh, furniture manufacturers and retailers are using some of these technologies. So let's look at the opportunity, and this is one of the statistics from uh, the 2018 uh, statista charts. And if you look at it, yes, the, the overall online furniture. Now, we are, we are not specific towards the e-commerce side right now. We would cover mostly about uh, furniture manufacturer, whether they're going direct to consumer or whether they're going direct to dealer or wholesalers or retailers, we will cover all of that. But at the same time, we, when we look at the branding or the digital uh, experience of any brand, whether they are a manufacturer or a retailer, they need to have certain visibility online until unless you know, it, it goes into just an in-store experience. So yes, there is a lot of uh, online and e-commerce uh, activities which are uh, shaping up. But at the same time, let's look at some of the key influence triggers that happens in the world. Today, we, when we look at virtual reality apps are definitely influencing the, the buyer uh, decision because every product that we purchase today as consumer, we look where it is coming from. So for, from a furniture manufacturer, it is very important that you know, we understand, we give that experience to the end consumer, whether I'm dealing with the end consumer directly or indirectly through a retailer or a wholesaler or a distributor, it is important that we give that experience to our end consumer. We also see that most of the time, 
you know, uh, as a consumer, we would like to have the product customized, then we are ready to pay for uh, with a premium price. And we also look at how the customers are retained. Now, from a retailer perspective, it is very important that they have, uh, you know, certain retargeting tactics to ensure that all of these customers who are buying furniture from their store will also be looking at uh, coming back at, uh, in, in the store or online to review those products. And at the same time, that data needs to go back to the furniture manufacturers because they would understand what is the expectations by the, uh, by the consumer. We also look at that the rate of information that is presented by furniture manufacturers are very important because every detail, whether it is the the, the picture of the furniture, whether it's the picture of the fabric that is on top of the furniture or the leather that has been used, everything requires a lot of information because today, if you are giving a very CGI and, and not uh, uh, relevant information or not specific information, a consumer might just bounce off from your site to a different uh, manufacturer and look for products that they sell. We also look at how mobile phones are being used. A lot of the interactions today are happening over the mobile phone. A lot of the interaction is happening over the chat because today uh, consumers, they feel that, you know, they, they want ready information which are very specific to the question that they have in their mind. And that's why chatbots and artificial intelligence is uh, playing a crucial role. Uh, we also look at that, you know, from a retailer perspective, personalization matters a lot. Most of the, uh, whether you are a, uh, you know, a, a furniture manufacturer who is direct to consumer, it, it makes a lot of sense to provide personalized strategies that can allow them, allow the users, at the end users who are, who are buying the products from you, uh, to get information related to their past behave, uh, behavioral uh, purchases that they have done. Uh, and at the same time, Retailers also report that analytics make a lot of information. As I mentioned earlier, that when we look at the furniture uh, industry, we always view it as a very traditional industry, uh, which relies on handcrafted and you know, manufacturing process, which are very traditional. You have like a workforce, uh, which understands uh, building a, a particular product uh, from a design level, and then you know uh, allowing them for, to be furnished in a modern society. Uh, but at the same time, analytics is important, so we will be touching upon that as well. And at the end of the day, we look at how AI can come all of it. 85% of most of the customer interactions today which are happening online in terms of uh, whether I am looking at products on the site, uh, moving onto the cart, or I'm just looking, uh, locating a dealer or locating a retailer and then taking that experience in the store all of this can be handled by an artificial intelligent uh, 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 system as, at the same time. So why, why are we looking at embracing now? Like when, when embracing digital transformation, we need to understand as manufacturers that there are certain challenges and pressures that we get, whether it is peer pressure or industry pressure. But over the years, the technology ecosystem has gone through many changes and has come a long way. And with technologies evolving at such a rapid, you know, rapid pace, uh, we, we kind of like understand that the business model, all of these different uh, uh, elements, which is the organization by itself, the workforce, uh, the business processes, what are the IT capabilities which surrounds that particular furniture manufacturer, how the customer service works, and what are the specific offerings uh, that particular manufacturer uh, provides, all of these becomes uh, important and digital transformation, however, is not a very simple concept because it involves numerous layers of technology adoption and change management. Because you need to understand that it, it is not just the IT that is responsible for a digital transformation, it needs to happen overall. Owing to the needs of these to move faster, companies and these manufacturing units they leverage a lot of latest technologies like virtual augmentations or artificial intelligence or machine learning uh, or in you know industry 4.0 which includes your iot uh, mobility and cloud just to build these disruptive um, you know products and reinvent these business models so that's where the entire furniture industry is uh, heading towards uh, we will see what goes into digital transformation. Now, this is something which is very important because at the end of the day, we need to understand the different elements that goes into digital transformation. Let's start with the audience. Now, audience can be our customers, 
the employees, the vendors, the suppliers, the management, all of them uh, is, is part of a, of a furniture manufacturing unit. Uh, when we look at the visual design, how do they come to us, whether they are uh, seeing our products and services um, in our website, whether they're seeing it on a mobile application or a mobile uh, site, whether they are walking into a store for the first time and seeing the products in a kiosk, or whether they're just questioning Alexa and Siri about what are the latest uh, you know, uh, furniture uh, uh, furnitures which are out there for uh, my office or home, or whether it is just another device that is giving out information which are very specific uh, to that particular furniture unit. So digital transformation also then looks at the experience and that becomes the digital experience. And this is just one phase of the transformation process because at the end of the day, you have to give experience to all of these different kind of audience which surrounds your uh, manufacturing unit. Then comes the technology. What kind, what kind of technologies are already out there? Uh, at your organization, at your manufacturing unit that can be leveraged. Uh, how do we integrate that? And once that is done, how we in involve any kind of coding environment and create a platform that can connect or help these different audiences connect between each other, collect the data from each of these audiences and give you insightful data. And that is where the logic applies because you at the end of the day, you need certain amount of optimization, uh, data processing, you know, uh, what is happening, all of these orders which are coming either from retailers or direct from the consumers to an e-commerce, how that can be optimized. And that is where artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, data analytics, and a lot of insightful alerts or the digital automation will play a crucial role which will make your, uh, any manufacturing, any furniture manufacturing unit understand what they can do best to serve their customer or their vendor or their suppliers. And finally, we look at the infrastructure. Now, infrastructure is basically all the IT services which is involved from the order to the customer service, to the production lines, uh, to the shipping and logistics, everything that surrounds that particular uh, furniture manufacturing. And this also means that how much of data you would want to keep on the cloud, whether on premise or hybrid, and that becomes your digital operations. So if you look at the digital transformation uh, you know, arrangement, it starts from the experience, moving on to the understanding of the platform, then creating those specific rules or automation cycles that can basically, um, you know, uh, um, Im improve the overall cycle as well as reduce these mundane tasks that a human goes through and then keeping that as a digital operation. So when we look at all of these different kind of digital transformation, the manufacturing is definitely evolving as I mentioned earlier. And uh, we have seen that with the help of technology, a lot of uh, manufacturers, it, it is said, you know, according to IDC, uh, which is one of the uh, well-known uh, uh, analyst group, they're saying that by 2020, 60% of plant floor workers, which is all these people who are involved in, in your production line, in your factories, uh, at every uh, manufacturer, whether it is not just furniture, but every other industry will work alongside automated assistant, uh, uh, assistance technologies such as your uh, you know, artificial intelligence, um, augmented reality, uh, robotics, and things like that. And, and moreover, let's say it is, uh, it's an, uh, it is not just the ongoing automation or optimization and the transformation that comes, uh, you know, uh, comes along with this, but the sheer business perspective is, is, will become a very important factor. And we need to add the human consequences because at the end of the day, we need to address that people see fast digitization as a threat. And we are seeing technology more as a win-win situation where people and these solutions, these technologies will work together and um, you know, uh, create a, a, a much more powerful uh, uh, ecosystem for every customers to be confident in using your product and services. So what are the IT challenges faced by manufacturing uh, units? Most of the time it is you know, keeping with, with the pace of uh, innovation. There are a lot of industries which definitely look at uh, innovation uh, as, as either a, a, a buck burner 
um, you know, whether they are looking at uh, compliances, whether they, they, they feel that they might not find the relevant resources, or inventory becomes a challenge. And, and these are the typical IT challenges which are faced. But when we look at the manufacturing challenges, specifically from the furniture side, what we have seen uh, over the years while working with some of our customers is errors, which are like very human-driven errors, um, you know, whether it is manual data entry, uh, whether it is the costing that is required, how do we allocate the cost, how do we uh, look at ROI, uh, poor visibility in terms of orders and the orders that are being processed and what kind of errors are coming out of the, the process, uh, the, the manual processes, all kind of paper-based information uh, uh, and lack of tracing back in terms of to see, you know, where does, the, uh, where does that particular bottleneck started, whether it is in a specific phase of your production line or whether it is overall production line. So there are different kind of challenges that are faced. And what we are saying today is there are specific three keys that can uh, be beneficial for the digital transformation in manufacturing. Uh, specifically, the first key is control. Now, controlling the plan four, because everything drives out of there, the real-time visibility and the control at the manufacturing uh, you know, moment is very important. A lot of production companies where you have these furnitures which are being churned out uh, in, a, in, a, in a given span of time, uh, real-time visibility of data is very important. The next key is connect. Whether um, the connect, uh, whether we are looking at communication and collaboration, a lot of the time what we have seen is that the order processing system or the order processing team of a furniture manufacturing, they are only focused on ensuring that the orders are coming through their retailers, through their distributors, through their to the end consumers, and funneled through to the production, uh, you know, uh, production team, so that they get the all of these job orders. Uh, but then there can be certain information that gets lost in translation because either the order that has been perceived by a uh, you know by the by the sales agent who is uh, taking the order is different from the person who is actually going to build that particular furniture so that level of collaboration and communication is very important so connect is also one of the three key uh, the the third key is unlock how do we unlock the potential of people keeping them informed engaged and effective now, most of the time, what we have seen is that a lot of these skilled workers, they are very specific to a skill type, which is either in a, in a manufacturing unit, we are specific to furnitures. We are looking at upholstery. We are looking at um, you know, stitching. We are looking at uh, uh, the, the frames, uh, the colors, all of these different kind of stations which are involved. And most of the time, they, they also do understand what they need to do. Uh, but keeping them informed and engaged with certain tools so that they can always learn more from that particular manufacturing unit is very important. And that will basically then involve the transform, which is helping the overall management unlock that, per, that the, the basic uh, uh, lock of how do we transform is giving that confidence and speed of uh, you know, uh, decision making because you are getting all of these different kind of data that is coming out from each and every type of resource, whether it's just people, machines, orders, and information that is coming through the floor. So a typical furniture manufacturing plant floor will have these different uh, elements. Now, we, we, we do understand that it is very important uh, that we look at each and every kind of uh, aspect of a plant floor. Uh, demands in the furniture industry have fundamentally changed in the last few years, and not only for mass customized, highly diverse goods in demand, but single highly customizable products have also become an everyday occurrence for manufacturers. Uh, and to achieve the cost effective and timely uh, production, uh, it is important that manufacturers need to revisit the systems that optimize these processes separately and and of course are able to control and evaluate it can you can definitely achieve uh, a, a lot more and and at the end of the day it is all about data because data helps forecast customer needs 
it, it helps the manufacturing unit to set priorities in terms of what needs to be marketed to these dealers, to these retailers, what are the different kind of channels, whether I want to push all of my catalog through a printed material or whether it is efficient to have all my catalog, my, my product, different kind of um, you know, uh, categories of products that as a furniture manufacturer I have in kiosks or mobile apps or web. These are different kind of uh, um, you know, channels that we need to assess. So with that data, what it helps is control and connect the plan for because you are getting data from each of these uh, different uh, information and Industry 4.0 plays a very crucial role because with the use of different technologies, whether it is RFID or beacons or different kind of sensors, we will get some amount of data uh, from these factory floors. And that data will help us take actionable insights, you know, from, from whether it is real-time insights or whether it is insights about a specific uh, uh, um, uh, function of the production line. So when we try to uh, bifurcate uh, or, or differentiate between yesterday's systems and today's system, yesterday it was mostly about accounting. We need to look at, uh, you know, most of the time it is about the orders that are coming in, how the plant is, we were mostly rigid about the processes with very limited access and visibility to data. And most of the data was disconnected because the systems were not talking to each other. But today's um, you know, furniture manufacturers, they have embraced a, a basically a versionless uh, architecture, which means that every data is, is synced across. There is a plant floor to all the top floors are connected. Uh, the, the, the collaboration is efficient and everything is real time. So they don't know at any given point of time how many furnitures they are gonna be producing at the end of the day. And at, at every time we tell our customers that we need to always focus on the single source of truth, which means wherever the data resides, that should be the original uh, uh, source of data. Uh, and that data is not just your reports and all, but even the images that go uh, onto your website, all these product images, the categories, or whether it goes to your mobile application or whether it goes to the catalog that you're sharing with the retailers and the distributors uh, or the end consumer. So there has to be a one single source. It is very difficult when you have desperate systems managing sources for each of these uh, uh, scenarios. So we will now cover on what are the different kind of digital solutions embraced by uh, furniture manufacturers. Um, and, and, and just to kind of like start with uh, a, a quick uh, backdrop, we've been working with a, with a couple of furniture manufacturers uh, who, were, uh, uh, who were looking at reimagining the interactions between dealers and consumers uh, and, and to, of course, improve the, uh, the sales. And the goal was to provide a seamless digital experience and provide tools that would facilitate learning, creativity, and a very smooth purchase cycle for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, for the end consumers. So what we did was we covered different kind of uh, technologies, and we will show you some of the examples uh, of what you see on the screen right now. To start with, let's look at AI Power Chatbot. Now, why we came up with AI Power Chatbot? Now, we have seen that the industry by itself has moved towards a, a very chat uh, 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 interaction. Nobody wants to pick up a phone and call up and ask when my furniture is gonna get delivered, how long will that take? I want to change uh, or customize my product. They would want to quickly send a chat. Uh, emails also have been efficient to some point of time, but today millennials, and even baby boomers are also looking at you know, the chat interface. And, and that being said, what is an AI chatbot? It is nothing just a computer program that kind of like uh, you know, understands the question that is coming from the customers, typically responds to those questions. And these can be as simple questions as how do I ma maintain my, uh, my sofa? How do I uh, you know, clean my sectionals? And things like that, which are, which are some of the questions that a retailer who is serving many uh, different kind of customers might not be able to answer effectively, but at the same time, the brand by itself will be able to uh, uh, answer. So given that, what we have seen is a chatbot for a, for, a, for a manufacturer can basically help in these customer support element. Now, what you see on the screen is a small example of how a chatbot on a website or a mobile application can allow 
the you know the end consumer to know more about the products or the retailers uh, nearby who can serve um, you know, any specific type of questions. Uh, they can look at uh, the the stores which are around them, uh, which can be ge geo specific. Uh, they can also look at uh, information about the products, whether it is um, to track the product or an order that I've placed uh, with one of the retailers. So they can, these chatbots does not require uh, a human interaction or the customer does not have to wait for 24 hours or 48 hours just to get one basic information that, yes, this is the date or this is the ETA of your product. So that's kind of like how AI-powered chatbot is changing the uh, the furniture manufacturing uh, uh, sector. So at the same time, these chatbots, which are placed on the, on the brand's website, uh, also allows visitors to you know uh, get an experience that they might not get over the phone, because uh, though they are uh, em emulating a live chat experience, at the at the end of the day, you know most customers they prefer to have a quick chat rather than you know, staying on the line. So next we look at the kiosk app. Now, what is the kiosk app? Uh, it's, it's nothing more than an experience on a large display where you can see uh, the products. Now, most of the time, what furniture manufacturers do see is that they have to create these printed versions of catalogs that needs to be shared across with the retailers or with the end consumers. However, uh, the business model is whether it is direct to consumer or direct to retailers and distributors. So a catalog kiosk is nothing but an endless showroom because in the store, when a when a buyer walks in, he gets to experience few of the products, not every product. They might see few of the variants of the color options for that particular product. But on a kiosk, what a consumer would get is an overall experience of how that particular product looked like. And this is something that we did for one of our customers where we have created a touch-enabled uh, interactive catalog where you can view new products, you can view the options of that particular product in terms of changing the colors, the drapings, whether, the, whether it is a fabric or a leather, how that would look like on the product, uh, and visualizing that entire experience in a, in a three-dimensional mode where you can rotate the product and see the product you know, from every uh, different uh, angle. And at the same time, also experience how the texture would look like on that particular product. So, man, and the best part about a kiosk application is because the real estate is large, it's larger than your smartphones and tablets, uh, it gives you a feel in terms of what best that particular product would be uh, and whether you would want to you know, create your own wish list of products or whether you want to create an order from the kiosk, everything is possible. So the visualization, the configuration is something very important where for a buyer when they are walking into a, a store and looking at uh, you know, all of the products uh, on, on that particular device. So when we look at iPad application or mobility by uh, uh, you know uh, as a delivery channel of your information, we see that iPad applications also are very important because all of these sales people who are selling your products, whether you're uh, you're um, uh, you're having your salespeople at the retail store or your salespeople at your distribution centers. So these uh, they need to be equipped with information which are fast and not carry huge catalog of uh, product information, specification sheets, which have teardowns of the product. And it, it, it becomes very overwhelming for the sales associates to, uh, to interact with the customer because most of the time they are fumbling with these papers uh, uh, in their hand. So what a sales associate catalog app would do is basically allowing them to show all of the different categories of products which are out there, uh, see videos of these products, what are the draping options, similar to what we have seen in kiosk, and also let them experience a, a configuration. How would the product look in a, in a specific environment, whether it is the customer's um, you know, environment or whether it is a, a, a generic environment within the store where you can place the product and see how the product would look like. So these are some of the um, uh, uh, experiences that will uh, enable the sales associates to basically go beyond, uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, just providing information about a product. 
Augmented reality plays a crucial role for specific to retailers and designers. A lot of interior designers, they look at room planners and showing the products on real time uh, to these customers um, uh, in terms of how it will look exactly with the specification of the product, the dimensions of the product, how that would look like uh, uh, within their uh, comfort. And, and that's kind of like what where augmented reality has taken a, a next step. So to summarize, these features of viewing the product details, you know, for the sales guys to looking at uh, uh, the information about uh, uh, the customer or getting a quick dashboard about how much they have sold, uh, you know, or what was their target, uh, uh, what are the top uh, products that they're able to sell, all of these specific details. And with the artificial intelligence chatbot, which will answer all of their questions, it is very important that they are able to uh, uh, you know, uh, get, give that best experience to the consumer. Uh, from a back-end perspective, now, when we look at all of these digital transformation um, and uh, activities, the back-end also is very crucial, and that's where robotic process automation uh, comes into place. Now, a very specific use case for these manufacturing uh, uh, companies, specific to the furniture side, we have seen that most of the time these retailers or e-commerce generates a particular order and there is a manual intervention to review the order. There is a manual intervention to uh, entry all of these order details back to the system. And then there is a back and forth details of uh, checking the order status and things like that. But when it comes to uh, an order entry itself, just that one specific use case, you know, the, everything can be automated where uh, a person uh, you know, fills up an order, it goes to the back end, it creates the order, it creates a job ticket, it goes to the production line, and the product starts uh, getting built. And, and that's where RPA plays a, a very crucial role. Uh, from a production line perspective, all these orders when it comes, now there, is, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, variants of digitization that a production line can take from uh, dashboards that are kept across uh, in every phases to actually uh, giving them kiosks to basically understand what they need to be do, doing on a specific type of product. All of these different information can be present on a, on a kiosk application or a large tablet or a smartphone. And that is something that, uh, that we are seeing uh, 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 in a lot of companies are uh, looking at. And when we look at these data, now, oh, and I did mention that data is very crucial uh, for any business, now, specifically for manufacturing um, uh, industry, it is uh, crucial because you need to understand how the, uh, the furniture artisans, the line managers, the executive management team, uh, you know, they need data at any given point of time. And with real-time dashboards that can basically pull these data out from systems and from the single source of truth, it, is, it becomes very relevant for that furniture manufacturing to make quick decisions to ensure that uh, the production is going on time, uh, there are no backdrops, the errors are reduced, and that kind of like improves a lot. And this also means that from a management perspective, the, the sales predictions becomes a much easier way to understand because you are forecasting based on your current production availability, the people availability, as well as the, your inventory that is out there. So it gives a much more uh, a better um, understanding of how exactly you can promote. And even from a digital transformation, the, the, the marketers of the furniture company also need to understand what are the top uh, uh, products that are, uh, that are being sold. And, and how do we how do they market for specific type of event, whether it is a specific product launch or whether it is events like Black Friday and Christmas and things like that. So that kind of like gives you data to predict these trends and use the data to uh, make uh, effective promotion of your products. From digitization perspective, there are sensors which plays a very crucial role uh, in any manufacturing unit, whether it is tracking of inventory, 
to um, you know seeing that uh, a raw material is going to finish good and what is the process that it is going through how long it is taking so the RFID implementation is also very important because it gives you data points from the time a particular frame has been decided to the time it is going into the shipping and logistics uh, 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 line of your organization and that kind of like uh, also helps a lot in the overall digitization perspective now touching a little more on augmented reality because uh, one of the key things that we did notice in, in the recent events that we have uh, participated uh, is that augmented reality is definitely um, you know becoming a, a much more important use case because at the end of the day and the end consumers uh, being on the mobile most of the time as well as designers who are uh, using a lot of these mobile technologies uh, we've seen that buyers and designers they basically love these features and we wanted to cover that also because when it comes to furniture manufacturing um, we need to understand that uh, augmented reality is not just for the end consumer it can also be made available for the factory worker to understand how you know look at how the finished product of that particular order would look like and give them a visualization that this is what they're building because that Im improves the overall motivation factor for those uh, specific factory worker and they're not just working on a job order for a specific uh, uh, you know a section of the overall product and that's kind of like what um, uh, impressed a lot from a consumer standpoint, from a manufacturing standpoint, that augmented reality is definitely taking a huge step. Um, a, a quick factor is like, you know, looking at a sofa configurator. Now, this is something, as an example, we would like to show is uh, how easy it is to look at different kind of configuration uh, effects. We have also built something very similar to this, and this is one of the example uh, from one of the service providers who basically provides uh, uh, um, you know, uh, the experience of how do we configure a sofa. Uh, and this basically shows that from a customer standpoint, it is very easy to look at that level of customization that uh, as a consumer I can do, the number of pillows I can add, how that would look like, and give me that perfect personalized product uh, at the end of the day and that effectively is uh, you know the configuration elements of, of the uh, in a in a in a augmented reality as well as on a kiosk and this can be anywhere whether it is on your website whether it is on the retailer site whether it is on a mobile application or on a kiosk this experience will uh, allow the end consumer to customize their product to the best of their ability So one thing that we, uh, 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 in the initial days, we looked at was, you know, placement of products on the floor. And, and this is something that we uh, developed for one of our customers where they, they have close to about uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of products in different kind of sections. And for an end consumer or for a designer, it is very important that, you know, they can add products, they can look at a room in a real-time environment and place these products uh, to see how that would look like. So that's kind of like uh, where uh, everything, all of these technologies come into the picture. Now, as a manufacturing, um, you know, specific to the furniture industry, we need to understand where do we start? We, have, we, we spoke about AI, we spoke about uh, digital transformation, which involves IoT and Industry 4.0 and everything. Uh, but it also is important to understand how do we prove um, you know, the value with small, quick projects that as a manufacturing unit I can consider? So one of the key things where to start is implementing the most relevant focus solutions. Now, as other industries are also seeing success in utilizing these different kind of technologies, whether it is AI or augmented reality or RPA, it is important that you understand um, you know, uh, where, do you, where you can deliver near-term value for your business, whether it is targeting towards your end consumer or whether it is for the retailers or for the distributors. And also to build the credibility through these different kind of uh, uh, initiatives that you're taking, you know, keep all of these different audiences, your customers, your, um, uh, your employees, your factory workers involved in this uh, process, because that will basically help us understand that. And at the end of the day, 
look at where your data resides, where are the roots of your data, whether they are on physical devices, uh, whether they are uh, IT-driven data, whether they are operational-driven data, keep all of these data which is at rest, which is not being used, and all of the data that is being moving around, try to connect um, you know, between these two so that we can create uh, a collaborative uh, uh, environment where the data can be shared across with different uh, uh, you know, resources. So as a summary, uh, you know, we, we, we will be um, you know, closing down for uh, questions and answers, uh, but I just want to uh, make sure that, you know, we cover every aspect of uh, the digital transformation for fan, uh, furniture manufacturing. And as a summary, it's, it's, it's about transforming the business and ju not just technologies. Um, it is about reducing these manual paper processes and errors. Uh, it is about getting visibility and, and control about who is working in the plant for floor, what is the efficiency, how is the quality coming out of the plant floor. It is about making these different machines or, or you know, processes uh, more relevant and give data that are relevant to the organization. And at the same time, it is also about the people who are working there because at the end of the day, uh, your business relies on all those plant workers who are working day in, day out, uh, building these beautiful furnitures and how they can improve uh, and be more motivated uh, in, in uh, you know, using these different kind of innovation and modern tools and, and technologies. And, and that's kind of like what uh, uh, this, uh, you know, this particular webinar session is all about, is to provide you that insightful information about where the industry is heading, what kind of technologies um, you know, uh, furniture manufacturers are using, and how they are using it uh, for the benefit uh, of their organization as well as the benefit of the end customers. So that's pretty much uh, brings us to the end of uh, uh, this webinar, um, and we will take in some of the questions. All right, thank you so much, Ritwick. Um, let me get to. Oh, it looks like we have a couple questions. Um, so first. What is the most exciting? What are the most exciting techno technology innovations coming to disrupt the furniture retail industry? Okay, I, I think I've covered a, a lot of those uh, specific points. But what we are seeing today, the exciting ones, are these three D configurators. Uh, room planning and augmented reality uh, applications, which is allowing uh, customers to visualize better and interact with products. Uh, for furniture industries, uh, uh, engaging tools are only available online uh, or through apps. Uh, just to give you a couple of examples, uh, uh, there is a company called Roche Bobis. Uh, they have a 3D studio application which actually gives customers the opportunity to display furniture and see how it looks in a 3D rendered uh, environment. You can start from, you know, from the scratch by using a, a pre-designed room or use your room as an augmented uh, 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 version and then modify that room with these configurations. And that is exactly something that we have done for a couple of our customers where we have used these products and, and involved the products in a, uh, in a way that Customers can conf you know, configure the products, customize the products based on their taste and um, you know, their need, and then basically build an ideal uh, room uh, which has products of that particular uh, you know, manufacturer. Uh, there are other uh, creative uh, tools as well which are um, available. Like for instance, uh, you can see uh, overall 360 view of the room, have a virtual reality headset to walk into that particular 3D environment and see how the products would look like. Uh, but yes, uh, these are probably some of the uh, most exciting technologies uh, which a lot of people are, uh, a lot of uh, furniture manufacturers and retailers are, are taking into consideration. All right, thank you, Britwick. Uh, we got one more question. Um, is it possible to apply deep neural networks on automating a furniture? Okay, uh, I'm not sure what uh, you mean by automating furniture. 
uh, are we talking about furniture business or self-driving autonomous uh, furniture? Now, uh, when we look at these two uh, examples, if it is the business of selling furniture to the end users, most of the companies do use some kind of machine learning to analyze the buying habits. And this is more on the, uh, the, the, the marketing technologies uh, uh, that is used by these furniture companies to understand the customer segmentation, the demographic, and then suggest the right kind of furniture to the customer based on their previous uh, buying, buying behavior or the type of questions they ask or how they navigate through, the, uh, through your website. So there are a lot of tools that uh, uses uh, machine learning and uh, as, you, as you mentioned, deep neural networks to understand uh, the buying patterns of consumers and or the web visitors in terms of uh, identifying the right product, the right fabric, the right leather, and all of that. Uh, and and it's, it is also possible to have systems that is capable of uh, recommending what kind of furniture to use according to uh, your interiors. And th this is where artificial intelligence and chatbot on the websites would work. And that's something that we have done for one of our customers where we have used the chatbot to give suggestions and recommendations um, you know, to the consumers based on, uh, on the uh, type of product that they're looking at. Um, and of course, like intelligence within a furniture is also, um, you know, also available. A, a lot of furniture makers are right now uh, introducing embedded technologies within their furnitures to understand who's sitting on it, um, what kind of experience that pers particular person should get, you know, while sitting on the furniture, uh, whether it is a couch or a sectional or a sofa come bed or a sleeper, you know, basically customizing the entire uh, uh, entire um, uh, furniture on, on based on your taste. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Ritwick, for presenting, and uh, we want to thank everyone for uh, joining us this Friday afternoon. Um, we hope you have a great weekend, and if you have any questions regarding the webinar or you think you might have a project you're looking into, um, feel free to give us a call. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have or um, just talk about technology. Well, thank you guys again, and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.